You know what a gavone is? A gavone's a guy with just, he like he got no manners. He's eating this thing and shoving it in his mouth. And I look at him and I say, that's really classy. Just as I say that, he starts to laugh and he spits everything out everywhere. That bastard. So Scott Conan. Yes, sir. When I think of your name, I think of really great Italian food. That's good because you should hear what people say about me. That's, <laughs> people often confuse Italian food and Italian American food. I mean, I, I like to think that I'm cooking American food uh, with an Italian vernacular. So what are some of the great ingredients you have for us today? We have some heirloom cherry tomatoes. We have some beautiful basil. We have oregano, garlic, local burrata. And we made some farfalle. Farfalle is uh, butterflies, and they're just little butterflies. Why this particular shape for, for this dish? Pasta is really about the texture. I mean, that's the palatability of it. Is there any rule of thumb you have? Sometimes at home, like, I don't know what shape to pick. Is there any guide that you could give us? You know, Italians are crazy for what pasta goes with what and when you should add it. So for example, a lot of people cook spaghetti bolognese. No Italian would ever do spaghetti bolognese. You just don't do that. You do tagliatelle. But something like this, I would say, kind of a chunky sauce, nothing that's too uh, hearty. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start really simple, extra virgin olive oil. I tend to go with more um, northern style olive oils. And they're a little bit less peppery. So beautiful garlic, and I'm gonna add that crushed red pepper. And you'll start to see just around the exterior of the crushed red pepper flakes, you'll start to see a little bit of a red color kind of seeping out of it. And it's a little bit brown like that. Not too brown, but a little bit brown. I'm gonna add some of these tomatoes. The internal juices are gonna kind of leak out, but also it's gonna to start to get a little bit thick. There's an emulsion that's gonna to start to happen. It's a combination of the fat, the olive oil that we put in there, the liquid from the tomato, and also from the pasta cooking liquid that I'm gonna add, and as well as the pectin, all those sugars that are inside the tomatoes as well, so. It's like what thickens up your jam. That's exactly right, chef. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a touch of oregano here. You know, I'm not a huge oregano fan. You so hate the dried shit, right? I'm not a huge fan of the dry stuff. Sometimes I'll finish it on pizza, you know, like yeah. sometimes, sometimes. When it's like 2 a.m. and you got your dollar slice, you've got that mystery jar and you just need to shake some stuff on there. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, where did you first start learning to want to cook Italian food? You know, I grew up in an Italian-American family. Initially, I wasn't crazy about Italian-American food, and it just didn't inspire me, I would say. You know, I started cooking fancy French food. When you're a young chef, you want to just create some sexy stuff. You know what I mean? That was really the goal. And then later, I went to CIA uh, in Hyde Park, and I just fell in love with the idea of cooking things like this, like ingredient-driven, beautiful, fresh product. So there's no, like, you know, tomato espuma or some crazy molecular thing. I think there's always a place for that stuff. I mean, it's like a concept car. You never get to betterment if you don't work on the concept. Yeah. But I don't know if that's what this is about, you know? That was pretty diplomatic. Yeah, that was that very was diplomatic. That was good. That was good. <laughs> I'm kind of proud of myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what restraint? No, no, no. I, I, I really do. I have, I have great respect for all that stuff. I don't know if people want to eat like that all the time. Sometimes, you just want to feed the soul. I mean, look at this, brother. Forget about it. It's like, this just makes me happy. When you first uh, were making food more in this style, we were like, where's my red sauce? Where's my meatballs? Well, my mother and I always have a little bit of back and forth. She says, you know what? You did fine. You grew up clearly fine with the food that I fed you. So she always gives me grief. I hope you like this. You're going you're gonna to have some with me. I'm gonna, are you watching? I don't eat you this shit. You can't be an Italian watching your carbs. <laughs> I'm a You're cook, man. I eat out of the pan. That is outstanding. Now, is this authentic? I don't do authenticity. That's not what I do. The authenticity in my cooking is the technique behind it. And just like really letting the ingredients speak. Good, Thank you, brother. Chef. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> I get paid to people film me eat. You know how that is. I, do, I know exactly how that is. <laughs> There's a note from the winemaker here. He looks like a nice guy. Peter Vella. He's excited for me to try his wine. Only the best wines get a nice frothy head on them. Oh my gosh. <laughs>